This first video for section 5.7 is just a review of inverse trigonometric functions. Um, and this actually serves as a review for both section 5.7 and 5.8. If we think about the six basic trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, they don't have an inverse if we think about them across their entire domain. So for instance, this is the function y equals sine of x. We can see that if I were to try to do the horizontal line test, it fails miserably. I'm going to end up hitting that function in several places. So y equals sine of x doesn't have an inverse, but it does have an inverse if I restrict the domain to negative pi divided by two to positive pi over two, which is just this section on the original graph. We can see in that section, if I were to draw a horizontal line, I'm only ever going to hit the function one time. So within this interval, I do have an inverse function. That inverse function is called arc sine. So arc sine of x is the inverse of sine of x. But again, using this restricted domain, which means the range, I'm gonna put domain here, the range of this function, as we can see, goes from negative one to positive one. And in true inverse fashion, it would then make sense that the domain of this function is negative one to positive one, and that the range of this function, as we can see, is negative pi over two to pi over two. Again, so we're restricting the domain, which in turn restricts the range. That is the case for all six of the functions. So we just looked at arc sine, and this is the inverse function. So this isn't the function of sine, this is the inverse function, arc sine, and it gives you the domain and range of that particular function, so of the inverse function. Same thing for arc cosine, arc tangent, and so on. So I suggest that you just take a screen grab of this so that you have it to look back on. This gives you the graph of the function and also the domain and the range of the inverse function. Before we get into the review of inverse trigonometric functions, and again, it should be review because you should have learned all about inverse trig functions and this, the unit circle, when you are in trigonometry or pre-calculus. So I'm hoping this is a review, but let's very quickly review what the unit circle is all about and why I would include it in this video. First of all, the whole point of the unit circle is that it's a circle with a radius of one and every point on the unit circle is found by taking cosine of theta comma sine of theta. So for instance, let's say I wanted to find cosine zero, sine of zero. Well, this is zero. Cosine of zero, as we know, is one, and sine of zero, as we know, is zero. So note that this gives me one comma zero. So why is this helpful? Because if I need to find, say, tangent of pi over four, well, we all know tangent is the same as sine divided by cosine. Well, what's sine of pi over four? If I memorized the unit circle, I know that it's radical two over two and cosine is radical two divided by two. So if I reduce that, I get one. So tangent of pi over four is one. The other really important thing to note about the unit circle is that if you can memorize just this first quadrant, then you've actually memorized the whole unit circle because anything, say pi over three, if I know the relationship that two pi over three is just going to be that same spot, but in the second quadrant, I know that that's going to make the X value negative, but the Y value is still gonna be positive. So note, these are the same ordered pairs, except that the X value is negative. So as long as you know those relationships, you can memorize just the first quadrant and it's going to make your calculations go much smoother for you. 
So let's start reviewing by just evaluating a function. So if we're trying to evaluate y, where y is the arc sine of negative 1 half. So how would I start to do this? I would just take the sine of each side. So why would I do that? Because if I take the sine of the arc sine, remember that those are inverses. So if I take sine of arc sine, those are going to cancel. So I have sine of y is equal to negative 1 half. So now the question is, sine of what is negative one half. So again, if you know your unit circle, this can help you to do this part much more quickly, but I would get negative five pi divided by six. I would get negative pi over six. I would get seven pi over six. I would get 11 pi over six and so forth. But, and of course that would go in each direction. This is where these values are going to come into play. We know that the range has to be between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. And that's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the y value. So the range has to be between those values. So which of these values is between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2? That would be negative pi over 6. So y must be negative pi divided by 6. And that is our solution. Here are two of those questions for you to try on your own. Notice that I have given you the picture for each of the arc cosine and arc tangent functions uh, so that you know how to restrict that domain and range. For the first one, again, this is arc cosine, which means I'm taking cosine of y is equal to cosine of arc cosine. Oof, arc cosine of zero. So cosine of arc cosine of zero. So cosine of y exists on the left side and on the right side, cosine and arc cosine cancel out to give me just zero. So now the question is cosine of what is equal to zero? Well, y would have to be negative three pi over two or negative pi over two or positive pi over two, or positive three pi over two, and so on in each direction. So it has a period of pi. Um, but what do I want? I want something between zero and pi. So that means my value has to be pi divided by two because that's the only value between zero and pi. Same thing for the second question. I would have to take the tangent of each side. So tangent of arc tangent of radical three tangent arc tangent cancel out so tangent of y is equal to radical three so then i have to determine what values of tangent would result in radical three y would be negative four pi divided by three negative two pi divided by three pi divided by three four pi divided by three and so on And that would give me a value between negative pi over two and pi over two. So I need pi over three. So that's my result is pi divided by three. Let's take a look at another type of question. Here, we're actually solving an inverse trigonometric equation. So here it's an equation because there's an X and I'm solving for what values of X. So that means just as I did before, I'm going to take the tangent of each side because I'm trying to get rid of the inverse trig function. So tangent of arc tangent of 2x minus 3 equals tangent of pi divided by 4. Tangent of arc tangent cancels out, so I get 2x minus 3 is equal to tangent of pi over 4. So tangent of pi over four, this one I don't have to worry so much about the domain and the range. I just know that tangent of pi over four is actually equal to one. So I get two X minus three is equal to one. Add three to each side, divide by two on each side, 
and solve for x. So notice this was a little bit different process. We weren't solving for what results in a certain tangent or cotangent value. We were actually applying the function directly. Let's take a look at these last two questions. And I want to point out that I have worded them differently, but they're the same type of question. For my first question, I said, y is arc sine of x, find cosine of y. For the second one, I said, find secant of arc cotangent of x divided by three. This one, I could have just rewritten it as cosine of arc sine of x. And that would have been the same format as the way that I wrote the second question. They're asking you to do the same thing. So either way that you're doing this, you're going to want to use a right triangle to help you determine any missing sides. So if I'm writing this using the Y, then my, that's my angle measure. So I'm going to call the angle Y. If I'm doing it like this, typically I just call the angle theta. So whichever one makes more sense to you, that's the way you should use. Um, let's go ahead and work through this one first, just the way that it's written. The first thing I would do is think about the sine of each side. And if I take the sine of the arc sine of X, obviously those are inverses. So I just get sine of Y is equal to X. So why does that help? Because I know that sine of Y is the opposite over the hypotenuse and that has to equal X. So opposite over hypotenuse has to equal X. So I'm going to call the opposite X and the hypotenuse one. So that's all I have to do for the first part. Now I'm asked to find cosine of Y. So how would I find cosine of Y? Well, cosine, so I'll over here, I'll just write that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse and cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's just call this side A. I need to know the adjacent side so that I can write the cosine. So I need to solve for A. So how do I do that? Well, I know the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem says leg squared plus leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So a squared is equal to one minus x squared. So a is equal to the square root of one minus x squared, which is not one minus x. Don't be that person. Now what do I do? Well, now I'm still trying to find the cosine of y and the cosine of y, if you'll recall, is the adjacent, which I just found, divided by the hypotenuse, which is one. So cosine of y, is equal to the square root of one minus X squared. And that's all I would have to do. So I'm gonna leave that on the screen for you. I would like for you to try the second question. Again, if you wanna call it Y, you sure can. If you wanna call it theta, you sure can do that too. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So I'm gonna go with theta. I'm gonna call this guy right here theta. And this tells me that the arc cotangent is x divided by three. So we're saying cotangent of theta is x over three. So cotangent is adjacent over hypotenuse because cotangent is the inverse of tangent. And of course, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. I'm sorry, I said hypotenuse, but it's opposite. Look at me trying to confuse you. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So cotangent is its inverse. You flip it upside down, adjacent over opposite. So why does that matter? Because this tells me that the side adjacent to theta is X and the side opposite theta is three. So that's really all I have to do for that part of it. So I've started to build my triangle. Now what do I have to do is I have to find secant. So what is secant? Secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. 
and I don't know the hypotenuse. So most of my work is going to be to find the hypotenuse. So that gives me leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. And that gives me x squared plus 9 is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So the square root of x squared plus 9 is equal to the hypotenuse. So now what do I have to do? I have to find secant of that. So secant of arc cotangent of pi, no, x over 3 is, again, hypotenuse, which is right here, square root of x squared plus 9 divided by the adjacent side, which is x. So this is my final solution. Now that we've had a great review of inverse trigonometric functions, we're going to work on differentiation.